let's walk in and talk about people who have the wrong views on speaking in tongues. Obviously, we have a lot of views like this in the Christian walk that are very unpopular or controversial uh, when we have certain views, whether it's tongues, whether it is tithing, whether it's the denomination, whether it's when somebody should get baptized. We're just going to go on a little walk in the woods, by the way. Uh, and you, as a Christian, have an obligation and a right to respond to people's views to these things, right? Yes and no. And I want to show you why I believe that the majority of the people uh, who have conversations about these topics are almost entirely in the wrong for even bringing them up, let alone mentioning their personal views on these topics. I know that that's a bold claim, but I want to explain why that is. We see Jesus has no problem in Scripture with talking about his views and why they're contrary to other people's views in Scripture, right? We don't, I mean, when the Pharisees are doing something that is just absolutely out there, absolutely wrong, he has no problem confronting that, correcting that, etc. So obviously, I am not the just, you know, love everybody and just let them believe what they want. I'm not that kind of guy. But I want you to examine the things that Jesus talks about versus the things that we often argue about. Do you find it interesting that Jesus never argued, I don't think, any of the points that we argue today? The things that you and I argue as Christians today, I almost never see Jesus make an argument for ever in my life. Um, baptism, when you should be baptized, or uh, the you know specifics of baptism. Have you ever considered that if Jesus thought it was that important to have a specific answer to this question, you know, we're talking about God, right? Like the one who like, you know, is the word and who's like all knowing and everything. Like, don't you think that he would have been more intentional with his consideration of adding that into the Bible if he thought it was that important to argue about? I think that Jesus wrote the word perfectly and he knew exactly what he did and did not want in the Bible. And I think that we should trust that the things that he did not put into the Bible, we can be okay with not having a super firm and definite answer to. Now, what I'm not saying is it's not okay to have conversations. We're not allowed to discuss these things. But what I'm saying is very rarely do I come across a Christian that is mature enough to just have a conversation about a lot of these topics. They need to have an argument about it and they need to end with being right. And then lastly, this is the part that's most upsetting to me, is if the, at the end of the conversation, the person does not change their views. Sorry, it's lightning back up. Um, if they don't have the same views as you, then this person wants to not really associate with you anymore, or at least on a regular basis, right? Uh, or they always want to, whenever they're around you, I have some people around me in my life that do this. Whenever they're around you, they always need to emphasize the fact that they do not agree with you on that point. Even if it's just in passing, like even if it's like not a disrespectful way of doing it, but they always need to remind you that like we're not eye to eye on this topic, which I think is a really unfortunate thing to do because 1 Corinthians talks about, you know, a main point that the entire thing is about. Y'all are zealous, y'all are excited about learning about spiritual gifts and all these things, but you have one big flaw, you know, Paul is getting at in the first three chapters of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians. He says, y'all have divisions among you and I believe it. He said, I've heard that you all quarrel among each other. And if you do so, are you not mere men? Aren't you just like, like spiritual infants? Like you are so fleshly if you guys are arguing. Arguing is what he it was in reference to. This is what Jesus is, or rather Paul's with influence of the Holy Spirit. His definition of spiritual immaturity looked like is people who argue with each other. And when we look at a lot of the YouTube channels out there today in the Christian space or the conversations that are had about certain topics regularly in Christian culture, we see almost all of them are on this topic of arguing because it sells, guys. People love the drama. People love spilling the tea, hearing the latest, the greatest, the worst, the baddest. People get so excited about that. This is why it's so sad. If you type in any Christian's name online, on YouTube specifically, one of the things that you'll see as a suggestion to pop up is, is a false teacher, false prophet, wolves in sheep's clothing, you know, just Satanist, demon possessed, you know, working for the devil, whatever. It's so sad that we are, as people, so excited to make videos and watch videos about this topic because it really shows where our heart is. And I think that, you know, a lot of people, they, they're trying to maybe do it with good intentions, saying, well, I just want people to watch out for all this false teaching out there. And although I understand the idea of that, um, I think that you have a lot less faith in Jesus than maybe you're claiming to have. 
if you believe that God is not strong enough to be able to bring people out of a lot of these different false teachings without the need of you calling out anybody and everybody and their brother. Now, obviously, what I'm not saying is that no topic should be discussed. There's obviously some topics that are definitely gospel-centric and leading people completely away from Jesus. There's a lot of others, though, that, like, they're just not, guys. Like, they're just not. You just don't need to mention them. You don't need to bring them up to people in arguments. Again, it's okay to have a conversation about it, but this whole... This person is a false teacher because of fill in the blank, I think is a really not cool thing to do to somebody, um, especially when they're just trying the best that they can as well to follow Jesus to the best of their understanding and the best of their abilities. So what I challenge you to do is with this tongues topic and every other is if you can be humble and cool headed enough to have a conversation with somebody about these things, then do it. Have a conversation about these things. And at the end of it, you know, like actually think if you can learn something because one of the things that I have personally learned in my Christian walk is a lot of the things that I knew for sure you couldn't shake me from in my Christian beliefs, I've been shaken from probably over 80% of them. Hear what I just said. Around 80% of the Christian beliefs that I could not have been shaken from because I was certain I was right about, I currently do not hold those beliefs anymore. Guys, be humble enough to say, hey, I might be wrong. And also be humble enough to say, hey, just because the denomination says this or because my tradition says these things are the case or these things are true does not mean that they are and doesn't mean that I need to be married to these things. I have plenty of things that I believe growing up because I was just told them or because I heard another really awesome teacher who I love today say something about. And like, okay, I'll give you a great example. I had a certain belief about tongues that I learned from John Bevere in a video series he did. Oh my gosh. It blessed me tremendously. I learned so much and I started teaching this everywhere because of how much sense it made. Later on, I figured out I'm not so convinced this topic of tongues with the way that he explained it is actually correct. It made a lot of sense when he said it, but I'm not sure it's actually correct. And I was so convicted in my heart that I was so confidently preaching something I was so unsure about. And I love John Bevere. I listen to and I promote his stuff on a regular basis. I think that he's one of the most incredible ministries on the planet. I'm just not totally convinced that he has that specific topic, like down pat, you know? And, and again, that's okay. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. He's allowed to not have that specific topic down pat. Just like I have a lot of topics that I know that I listen to or believe that I don't necessarily just have down pat. You know, there's a lot of things that I'm still growing in grace in. And there's a lot of things that, you know, you'll see me talk about or not talk about here or people more specifically who know me personally and they will they, they know that I don't talk about them because yeah, I don't I'm just not confident enough to make a confident claim because I know that there's people out there that listen to what I say and really trust it and respect it and I don't want to lead them around the wrong path and I know that if I'm saying something super confidently like that there's a really good chance it is going to lead them down the wrong path so be humble be open and focus on unity of the body and saying, hey, you and me can completely disagree on these topics, but that's okay, because at the end of the day, we're brothers or sisters in Christ, and what matters is us collectively bringing the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven.